Hey, what's up guys, and today I'm going to be talking about the huge update that we just got a few days ago, which includes the new weapon combo changes, rolling iframes, skill sharing, and other miscellaneous stuff. I won't go too deep into skill sharing, so I'll mainly just be giving you guys my first impressions on it, because I'm not going to spend boatloads of money just to test them out. So I guess we'll start with the weapon changes. The update gave changes to all weapons except for lance and bow. The sword no longer has a jumping animation in C4 and C5, instead the sword does a grounded uppercut. This is a really good change in my opinion, I was kind of worried that the sword was going to lose the super armor effect in the C4 and C5 attack, but it didn't, it retained that tech. For those that do not know what I'm referring to, basically you can use sword C4 in order to prevent getting knocked back by weak attacks. So good uses for it is to prevent knockback on high dragon's initial blast. Instead of having to hold force strike to prevent knockback, you can just C5 and prevent the knockback while gaining some SP. Another good use for it is to do C4 on high Midgar's dash. Mana spiral characters usually get some type of Poen ability where if the character gets hit by an attack that would inflict a particular affliction, then the character will gain a strength buff. So therefore, you can use the C4 super armor to gain that strength buff off of high Midgar's dash because his dash inflicts stun. Of course, this is assuming you are using a character that has potent stun resistance. So yeah, sword retained that effect which is really good. Another pro about the removal of the jumping animation is that the sword can now roll cancel out of C4's animation. Before, when you go into the jumping animation, you were just stuck in that animation. You couldn't roll out of it and it felt awkward every time when I would accidentally do C4. So another great change there. Now the question that every way keeps asking me is do you still do C2 or C3 force strike with a sword? What is the new optimal combo? Well, I tested all sorts of combo in MG using Marv to see which combo filled his skill 1 the fastest. C2 force strike, C3 force strike, and C4 force strike all filled his skill 1 in the same amount of time. C5 on the other hand filled skill 1 late by 1 second. With all that being said, the optimal combo for sword seems unchanged. It's just now that C5 looks like it's a little bit more viable, but you still want to do C2 or C3 force strike. Now I understand that C2 force strike is a bit hard for new players to do, so try doing C3 force strike instead because that's a little bit easier to do consistently. Next is the blade. Blade C5 had its power adjusted. If I recall correctly, the C5 on the blade originally only did one hit. Now it does two hits instead of one and it's a lot stronger. This part of the change is a small buff to blades because they are now slightly better at using flurry skills. In addition to that, the blade also got a small buff to its SP gains. It's not by much, but it definitely got more SP. Now one minor issue with the blade change is that if you force strike fail the C5 too early, then you're going to lose out on the second hit on the C5. If you delay the force strike fail, you can get the second hit off, but I mean you're going to end up force strike failing slower just for a second hit. I don't know if it's worth it probably doesn't matter. The optimal combo for the blade should still be C5 force strike fail or C5 force strike if you need to reposition. Plain C5 is not good because it has really bad lag at the end. If you cannot do any of those optimal combos then just do C5 roll. Now next up is the dagger. You guys should know by now that I don't ever play dagger so I can't say anything based on my own experience but I still have plenty of information for you guys. The dagger lost the jumping backflip animation on the fifth attack. In addition to that, the power of the 5th attack has been increased. The damage mods on the C5 hit went from 142.8% to 180% and the SP gains on it increased from 288 to 480. From what I hear from dagger players, C5 is now the optimal combo. All you gotta do now is tap 5 times which I know is quite boring. I think you might be able to add a 4 strike at the end as well. Also just like the sword, the dagger is now able to roll cancel out of the C5 animation. Alright next is the axe, oh boy. This one is the one change that I personally do not like. The axe lost the jump on the C5, therefore you cannot C5 force strike anymore. Not only was C5 force strike really fun to do, but it had uses. I remember when I was using Curran versus Standard High Jupiter back in the day, there was this rotation that I did where I could reposition myself with C5 force strike to dodge the 8 way. You know small stuff like that was really fun to do and I'm really gonna miss that. Now the only combo that the axe can do is plain C5 combo, which is right out boring to do. I know for sure that there's going to be a bunch of players out there that's going to tell me, well, you should be doing C5 anyways because it's the optimal combo. Nobody has ever gave me an explanation of why C5 is the definitive optimal combo. When I did my optimal combo video, I stated in that video that C5 force strike was the optimal combo. I got a bunch of comments saying C5 is optimal. But if you actually go test the two combos out, which I know you can't anymore, and compare the two as 0% skill haste, C5 4 strike comes out ahead in SP gains. Now the optimal combo did vary depending on how much skill haste the character has because of breakpoints. At certain skill haste percentages, 
spamming C5 was better, while at other percentages C5 Force Strike was better. Like for example, if you take Vanessa skill 1 or any other axe skill that's 3033 SP, which there's a lot of, C5 Force Strike into C4 feels faster than C5 C5 by about 0.4 seconds. However, once you give Vanessa 9% skill haste, then her optimal combo becomes C5 C4. So what I'm saying is the optimal combo vary depending on many different variables such as skill haste percentages, SP cost, and breakpoints. Anyways, moving on, this change is also really awkward for Lin Yu players out there. She has this effect in her skill 1 where her next 3 4 strikes will create cyclones. Lin Yu used to do C5 4 strike in order to get those cyclones out to build combo really quickly. Well now she can't do that. So yeah, overall I don't like this change at all. Believe it or not, Axe was actually my first favorite weapon and that was just boring to play. They took the only source of mobility Axe had and to end it all, the C5 animation now looks really dumb, I'm not gonna lie. Lastly, there's the wand and staff. Not much change other than the projectiles having their speed increase. It's a small buff, nothing really worth talking about here. Alright, so now let's finally talk about the new rolls that can iframe. People call these Dark Souls rolls or whatever. I don't really like this update personally. You can now literally spam roll to dodge every single iframeable attack. You can roll spam through anything, such as Ikai Spin. Like, look how ridiculous that looks. I know there's going to be people out there that are going to be like, well you shouldn't be spamming dodge rolls or else it's a DPS loss, it's still better to iframe with a skill. Yeah, that's all true, but that's not the point. You see now there's absolutely no reason to manage your skills properly in a rotation for iframing. You can just use all your skills and use roll for iframing. It really ruins the fun of trying to perfect that rotation for boss fights. I remember when I used to play High Zodiac. Players would have to bait the poison spits in certain directions so that the team can safely walk towards Zodiac after he dashes. Like now it doesn't even matter. You can just roll through it. Another example is Volk's resentment phase where he does the red lines with the claw swipes. You used to have to iframe all those red attacks and manage your skills correctly and also position well. Now you don't have to. You can just unload your skills and just iframe the reds with your rolls at the very last second. Like, I understand that's a good change for new and casual players, but it honestly makes the game less fun knowing that you always have this safety mechanic that you can just rely on to dodge all these iframeable attacks. Another minor issue that I have with this update is that dragons also have the ability to iframe with their dashes. This does make it a tiny bit harder to suicide them in certain situations. One example that comes to mind is Master's High Midgard. When I used to do Master's HMS solos as Yudin, there's a moment where you can dragon and suicide the dragon instantly from High Midgard spin. The spin that he does has two hits to it, it starts on one side and ends at the other. So in order to instantly kill off your dragon, you have to get hit on one side then roll to the other side immediately. Well now, as you can guess, it's a bit hard to do cause you'll just iframe the second spin with your dash. It's not that big of a deal, just a minor con, but it is still a con. But anyways, let me know what your guys' opinion is on this because this roll update seems to be the hot topic right now. Now last thing I'm going to talk about is skill sharing. This is where characters can basically equip certain skills from other characters unlocked by using tomes which can only be obtained with real money at the moment but will be given out in future events. I don't really mind this update, I think it's really cool and it's a great addition to make the game a lot more fun. More customization options are always fun. A cool thing about share skills though is that it doesn't drop your combo like helper skills do so that's kinda nice for certain characters that rely on having high combo count. This feature also fills in the holes for certain characters or teams. For example, let's say you go into a fight and nobody has a dispelling move. Well, now you can just equip Ranzel skill for dispelling and also for a way to unreliably inflict poison. You can do that. I think being able to do that is kinda neat and really fun to play around with. Now don't get me wrong, share skills can be OP at times, but honestly, it's really only OP in premades where you can actually make use of some of these skills to their fullest potential, especially the high costing ones such as Elisan skill 1. As for pubs, it does improve the gameplay there, but not as much as it does for premades. So yeah, overall I think the updates are good. My opinion on them is kind of mixed. There's some good stuff that came out of it and there's also things that I didn't like. I'm gonna just say this and I think I can vouch for other veteran players on this. This update as a whole makes the game less fun, it makes the game more tappy and there's less things to think about now such as not needing to manage skills for iframing reds and not having to incorporate 4 strikes into certain weapon combos. Now on the flip side, this is a really good update for new players and casuals. Dragalia Lost doesn't really teach you anything about optimal weapon combos, you pretty much have to research or watch videos on it. New players aren't going to know that doing C5 with a sword and co-op is going to get you flamed by your teammates. The game doesn't really teach you that stuff. 
Now you have no choice but to do C5 on Axe, and it's better to do C5 on Dagger. Sword is in the same boat as before, it's still better to do C2 or C3 Force Strike than C5, but at least now I don't think it's as noticeable if some random pub player does C5, so that could help with reducing toxicity, which is good. I guess a big part of this update is skill sharing and that feature is quite fun to play with so I think overall the update is quite good. I think it's definitely better for the game when considering the majority of the player base, but yeah anyways, that's gonna wrap things up for this video. Let me know what you guys think about all this stuff in the comments down below. As always, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.